For whatever reason, the Soviets didn't submit that skill to be named after Mastapanova, and they should have, because she deserves it. Just legend stuff, right? <laughs> So what I wanted to talk about was just a brief little rundown about the 1983 Soviet World Championship team in Budapest, Hungary. The team was Tatiana Frolova, Albina Shisheva, Natalia Ilyenka, Natalia Irchenka, Olga Mastapanova, and who am I forgetting? Olga Bicharova, the reigning world champion. I watched home video coverage of all the Soviet routines, all 24 of them, and I have quite a few interesting observations. First of all, Yurchenka was up last in all the events, so that was deserved, I would say. The one spot I might have considered having her up fifth would have been on beam and putting Mastapanova last because Mastapanova's beam routine is just chef's kiss. However, I actually love Yurchenka's beam routine as well. I do like her 85 routine more because she implemented her revolutionary layout step out mount, which she was the first to do, and she was also did it the best. You don't see that every day. The innovator or initiator of a skill also being the best one to ever do it. Your chinka things, right? And that's why I love all the Soviets so much because they wouldn't just chuck a new skill, right? When they put a skill into a routine, it was usually mind-blowing good already. Poor Ahimplo. Albina Shashova did, I think she did a round off tucked full on beam. First gymnast ever to do a full twisting salto at the world championships on beam. And she did it wonderfully in terms of the height. No chest down there. It was terrific. I actually feel like the 83 Soviet team is overlooked somewhat. I would be the first one to overlook it. It's not one of my favorite teams. I prefer the 85, the 91, and the 92 teams but the 83 world team is still great. I know a lot of people pick on Tatiana Frolova, but she really is the one that holds the team down. She was the first gymnast to throw a full end off beam at Worlds, and she did it really well. It made up for the fact that she had an incredibly empty beam routine with no flight series. The one aerial skill she did was like a front toss, and then all of a sudden she does a round off full end, and you're like, oh my fucking God, is she for real? Going back to Shashova's 9-9 with all the breaks that she had. They took ROV seriously back then, and that was the system, I think it was in place at this time. ROV, Risk, Originality, and Virtuosity. So, Shashova's beam routine had so much risk and so much originality, 
and pretty good virtuosity, but I don't think we should just completely ignore execution deductions. So I'm kind of of two minds. I think she deserved a 9-9 when you factor in those two incredibly unique and difficult skills that she did, but she did have some pretty significant breaks, I probably would have given her a 985 to be honest. Factoring in the, the ROV. So let's start with Vault, okay? Frollova was up first and she just did a layout Sukahara Vault. Then Natasha Ilyenka was up and she did a Tucked Cuervo and she did it quite well. She pretty much almost stuck the landing. <laughs> Then Albina Shashova becomes the first gymnast to ever do a Yurchenko style vault at a world championships. She does a Yurchenko tucked full. And the only reason we're not always saying Shashova a million times during a broadcast instead of Yurchenka is because Yurchenka did it at the 82 World Cup. At that time, you could get skills named after you from doing them at a World Cup. So that is why we call the round off entry vault the Yurchenka and not the Shashova because they both pretty much learned it at the same time. They both had the same coach and trained at the same club. <laughs> then you had Mastapanova. She did a piked Cuervo vault, and I think it was the second one that she stuck, and she got a 10. Very well deserved. <laughs> The last three Soviets all got tens, okay? Next up was Bicharova. Her vault was more a Pike Barani, and she got a 10 with a visible hop. <laughs> she did not deserve a 10. No, that was wrong. Then last up was the star of the team, Natalia Yurchenka. She did her trademark vault, Yurchenko tucked full, stuck it, and she got a 10. Get it done, your One of two 10s she got in optionals. Then we move on to bars, okay? Shishova's up first. Her routine was a struggle. She doesn't have the best swing or look on bars. Quite labored. Frolova was next and she was actually quite good on bars. She had a very, very good, enjoyable routine. Dismounting with the double tuck and she got a 995, if I recall correctly. was I think Bicharova. She probably had the second worst routine on the team. She did do a Takachev and it wasn't horrible. I wanna think she did a front half style dismount but I can't remember. So it was just okay. Then one of my surprises of the meet because I haven't watched this meet since before I moved from Kansas City probably and that was in 2007. So it's been a really, really long time. Okay, Natasha Ilyenka on bars. I was blown away. I was not expecting this. I had, did not remember her bars routine at all, but it was so friggin' good. So amazing. Very, very unique. She did a lot of like uprise full, full turns, I think. Whatever the skill is where you swing down and rebound off the low bar like a belly beat thing and then go back up but then she would go back and do a full twist and then go up or a full turn it was frigging incredible and her line was chef's kiss gorgeous extension my jaw was dropped because it was so beautiful and then her dismount was like like a ma yan hong style dismount like a, a swing through one and a half skill it was so cool and of course she had to take a couple of steps back, which brought her score down to I think a 975, 98, somewhere around there. <laughs> Yeah, no. 
Mastapanova on bars, of course. Of course, she clipped her foot on her Takachev as she always does, I think, bar once or twice. So I'm really, really curious to see her bars routine from Olamotes. In order for me to think it's a believable 40 in the all around, she better not have hit her, hit her foot on her Takachev, okay? <laughs> That's all I have to say. So yeah, she hit her foot on the Takachev and then yeah, she had a big break as well, doing a pirouette on the low bar. And I think she's still got like a 975. It was it was pretty unjustifiably high in my opinion. Then we get to the goddess herself, Natasha Yurchenka. That routine. There are no words. Stunning. The back-to-back, Takachev to Delchev. She does the same belly beat skill that Ilyenka did, except she goes right up to the handstand. Then she does a giant, giant double twist dismount. And she had a slight little adjustment on the landing, but it was still flawless. My favorite bars worker on the team and a deserved 995. So at this point, halfway through, she's killing the meat. She has a 10 and a 995. So then we move on to Bean, which I've talked about a little bit already. Frolova was first, and Frolova and Shishova both did full end dismounts, which insane. Bicharova didn't fall, but she grabbed the beam, which is at least three tenths. She ended up getting a 9-6, okay? The most disappointing part of the meet was Natasha Ilyenka on beam, okay? This routine is ROV to the max, sublime. Her extension, her posture, her toe point, her line is all beyond exquisite. And one of my favorite combinations that I've ever seen on beam, she does a split leap into a gainer back tuck, but she missed it and she fell, so that sucked. The routine is chock full. Her score was a 9.45 with a fall, <laughs> which shows me that the judges were lapping that shit up same as me. Loved it, okay? <laughs> Stepanova, another routine that's chock full. <laughs> the back handspring on Nodi. She also does a flight series with the layout step out. Just beautiful scales, kicks. Her extension is sublime. It's just all, all, all so gorgeous. I'm pretty sure she got a 9-9 as well. Okay. 
The anchor, as I mentioned, she was the anchor on all four events, Natasha Yurchenko, okay? This routine, exquisite. I just reacted to her routine from Montreal. This was pretty much the same routine, except she wasn't doing her mount yet. Back handspring layout, step out, into a back walk over, into her scale. She does the full turn, and then the Yurchenko loop, round off, tuck double back, with a really good landing. And lo and behold, the judges gave her a 10, and I completely agree. <laughs> Then we move on to the floor, and this is where things get interesting. <laughs> Things were just bizarre on floor, okay? So most of them would do a full in mount, some would do some kind of combination into a double back for the middle run or some other kind of combination pass and then dismount with a double tuck. I think they all dismount with the double tuck. It was pretty uniform, tumbling wise. First up is Shishova. She had a couple of sus landings and her dance and choreography, I think, were the worst on the team. It was a pretty good routine and I think she got a 9-8. Next is Frolova, Tatiana Frolova. You have to differentiate because there is another gymnast, another Soviet from the times. I think she was really at her peak about 86. Natalia Frolova, who has one of the best floor routines ever. And poor Tatiana has kind of gotten dissed or looked down upon because she happens to have <laughs> the same surname. But Tatiana's routine was pretty good. She has a couple of interesting choreographical movements, and I think I would probably have her fifth um, right ahead of Shashova in terms of choreography. However, her tumbling in terms of the landings were maybe the best of the team in terms of how she landed her passes. So you can see how she qualified for the all-around ahead of Bicharova, especially after Bicharova had that huge break on beam, touching the beam. I'm a bit surprised that the Soviet coaches didn't just sub Bicharova in because Bicharova was the reigning European champion. That's what I would have done. Actually, what I would have done is if Ilyenka qualified in the top 36, which I'm sure she did, I would have subbed in Ilyenka for Frolova, just to be honest, because I love her. Even if she falls eight times, 
Speaking of Natasha Ilyenko, so she is next. Her choreography is the best on the team, hands down. But the tumbling was a mess. Poor girl. Okay, so <laughs> she didn't need a full end to win her floor title in 1981, but now she does and it's not good. She stumbles out, goes out of bounds. Second pass, I think she does maybe whip to double full. And then her dismount was a tuck double back and it was another struggle landing, okay? She gets a 9-6, <laughs> which as the reigning world floor champion, it's just not a good score. <laughs> is just out of this world amazing. Fourth up was Bicharova, and I almost think Bicharova has my favorite floor routine on the team, just overall, in terms of the tumbling and the dance and the choreography, everything together. I really love this routine from Bicharova. It's cute, it's playful, unique, she does a great job of making eye contact and selling her routine. I just love her routine. And she did pretty good landings, and I think she got a 9-8. <laughs> left. Mastapanova is fifth up. She does, I think it's supposed to be a pike full in mount, although Mastapanova was such a beautiful gymnast, but on a skill here or there, a few skills she would have if you form on, and one of them was her floor mount. Then her second pass is quite unique. She does a full twisting front handspring through to a double fold, and her dismount is a tuck double back, which I think she landed a bit short on, but she still gets a 9-9. Her choreography is great. I always thought it was a bit manic, but I don't know, maybe I'm just seeing things differently the older I get because this was the first time I really remember enjoying that routine and not seeing it just as a, a manic mess. <laughs> Thank you. 
probably it might be my favorite routine. It's tough to say. Probably Mastapanova or Bicharova overall, but just in terms of just choreography, of course, it would be Ilyenka. But like I said, Ilyenka, <clears throat> those landings, she was in Danger Girl, so no. And the last Soviet routine from Optionals was the girl who would go on to win the all-around title, and then, of course, as only she could do, injure herself during the first event and event finals, <laughs> so she couldn't win any more individual medals. And in fact, Natalia Yurchenka, she has won world and Olympic individual medal, and that is the gold medal in the all-around at 83 Worlds. This routine mounts with a full end, which she was a, a hair short on, middle passes whip to double back, which was pretty good, and then dismount with a tuck double back, which I think she was again a hair short on. <laughs> Judges give her a 9-9, which I think is fair. It's probably what I would have given her as well. And she kills optionals. Her final score is a 39.85, going 10-9-9-5, 10-9-9. Killed it. Mastapana had the second highest score, and she got a 39.55. So Yurchenka was three-tenths ahead of Mastapana. That's how great Yurchenka did in optionals which is interesting because the all-around finals were much closer. I'm gonna do a similar video for 85 Worlds. The lineup choices there were quite interesting and I think there might be a little bit of a conspiracy, especially regarding Mastapanova's uh, lineup positions in Montreal. But this meet was, I think, pretty accurate for the most part. It's a great team. I like the lineup choices. I love the gymnastics, oh my gosh. Again, my Wally wow surprise moment of the week was Ilyinka's Vars. Insane. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Please smash that like button, subscribe, turn on notifications, engage, and I will see you guys in my next one. Take care. Bonne journée. Bye. Mwah.